that thing are going to try to get me to buy. No. Hey, we're live, though. Ooh. Welcome back to SwitchCast Live. I'm your host, Doug Tabbitt, and SwitchCast is the podcast where we seek to educate, edify, and entertain you on the drive of your life. This season, we've been focusing primarily on topics and guests that help our listeners be more informed, smarter buyers and sellers, avoid scams, and make great decisions from their initial purchase through all the aspects of ownership. Tonight, we're covering a very hot topic. We've been asked uh, innumerable questions about this along the way, and just in 19 years of business, I've been asked this question more times than I can count. And uh, it, it is always a form of how the heck do I ship my car without getting screwed? It's a really, really good question, and tonight we're going to talk about automotive transport, how to get your car from point A to point B. As a cannonballer, I would advise just to drive it because that's way more fun, but some of us don't always have the time for that. Uh, sometimes you buy collector cars that have no miles on them. You don't want to take the risk. Uh, any number of reasons that, uh, that driving isn't an option, or for people that are car ADD and buy like 10 or 20 cars a year and cycle through them, then uh, driving isn't necessarily an option either. But anyway, um, you know, hundreds of thousands of people ship their cars every year, so it's it's a reasonable uh, topic to cover. And uh, this actually may become a two-part series because to start out, we're going to talk about everything wrong with the industry and some horror stories and pitfalls of using the wrong character uh, carrier. Yeah, the carriers are often characters <laughs> themselves, too. And this might take all night because there are so many horror stories. Uh, so if that happens, we'll uh, we'll come back to part two next week. Um, and uh, we invite questions from our live audience. We appreciate you guys on the YouTubes and Facebooks and TikToks. Um, I will say a couple of uh, helpful hints regarding questions. Um one, it helps us out greatly if you ask your question with clarity so we understand what you're asking. Otherwise, we'll just assume whatever we feel like that we think you're asking and answer a question you probably didn't ask. For example, last week I went on a 10-minute diatribe about the Ford Bronco and GMC Jimmy when a guy really wanted to know my thoughts on a Suzuki Jimny, which we don't even get here in the States, but he had coined the term... Mini Bronco. Mini Bronco. Yeah. That's right. And that which, really just sent us. I got we I, done a whole road of confusion. It, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No inside jokes when you're asking us these questions, <laughs> right? If we don't get the car here, I'm not going to know the, the yeah. inside nickname for it. The rest uh, of the chat kind of jumped to his aid, but alas, it was too late. <laughs> it was, for we had we were gone. It was, it was too gone. <laughs> anyway, so I'm kind of thick headed. So when you're asking questions, pretend you're talking to Michael Scott. Explain it like you would to a six-year-old, and then I'll give you a far more intelligent answer. Uh, second, we absolutely love our live audience. We've always said this is an interaction, uh, not just a fire hose of information. So uh, we appreciate all of you who are with us live every Wednesday. And it's a, a wonderful balance of a pre-planned show and natural banter. Uh, and we're really, really happy as well for the growth in our audience. Thanks mostly to Ethan, our producer and promoter. Uh, but with that, please understand we can't get to everybody's questions. So for tonight, topical questions on the topic of car shipping. Those will go to the top and those will get answered in the normal flow of our show. Uh, second, uh, priority goes to people who send questions with tips. We are total sellouts here on this show, and the bigger the tip, the sooner your question gets answered. But we do have a, a marked uh, scheduled Q&A session later in the show brought to us by Nuts for Sticks, and we'll get as many as we can in there. And third on the list, just for you live viewers, after the hour-long normal segment of the show, we will have what we call Tip Talk, and that is our live Q&A after the recorded show, and we have a lot of fun with that. So get your questions in early. We will get to as many as we can, but please understand we can't answer everybody's story. So throw those in and uh, throw some popcorn in, make some coffee, because I may put you to sleep. That's totally fine. And uh, um, yeah, come along for the ride. Um, so to get right to shipping stuff, um, we've had so many different issues with 
transportation, and, and I won't say just us because we've had a, a pretty good string of, uh, I don't know if it's good luck or good fortune uh, based on how careful we are with shipping cars, but you can't get everything right all the time. Um, but based on the things I've encountered personally and the stories I've heard from other collectors or dealers, I've put together a disclaimer that we send out to people who buy cars from us if they're using their own shipper. Uh, we offer a, a service for people that buy cars from us and we'll say, hey, we can you know, book something using one of our trusted shippers, but if we deviate from that normal route and you want to pick somebody you found at a discount or through a broker, you have to sign this document essentially absolving us of any liability for what the transporter does because they'll do something. And in the car business, it seems like no matter what goes wrong, it's the car dealer's fault. Always. So this is a kind of a CYA document, but it illustrates how like crazy just stuff that has happened. So uh, I won't necessarily tell the full story of all of these, but I'll just kind of run down the list. Stop me if you want to hear the extended story. Um, but in our shipping disclaimer document, we list these things that we have seen actually happen and i'm adding one to my list right now um because i just came to mind oh man so these are the list of things we've actually seen and this is on our shipping disclaimer that we send out we literally want to scare people out of using their own shippers um, that's how difficult to navigate this industry is so first on the list uh trucker dropped a car off the back of their truck that's not even like that happens all the time was that like with one of the like double decker situations and it just kind of came off the all the of platform them. <laughs> okay. yes and the wedge trailers where they've fallen off when they were driving because they loaded it in the wrong place oh. and the lift gate ones because either the hydraulic lift gate failed or the like little ramp on the back of the lift gate broke off or they didn't put a, um, you know, they put the car on the lift gate, left it in neutral or whatever, and either the parking brake failed or whatever, and it rolled back, and they didn't put a wheel chalk there. So, okay. like, good truckers will pay attention to this stuff, and ideally their equipment b will be maintained properly, too. I mean, that's half of it. You get these cheapo truckers that are running with way out-of-date equipment, and... Um, and that brings us to another thing, like half the time when when uh, kind of the there's a couple jokes about truckers. One is that they run on TST. We call it trucker standard time. So it's plus or minus three hours to when they say they're going to be there. And that's usually when they're within two hours of the dealership. So it's plus or minus three days otherwise. So if they say, I'll, I'll be there at noon, it's like, well, next week, you know. But, yeah, we, we operate on trucker standard time. Um, but the other joke is they're always like, oh, my, my truck broke down. My trailer broke down, which is just, it's just constant. Every time there's a delay in shipping, it's my truck broke down, my trailer broke down. And granted, they're dealing with a lot of heavy equipment that's getting a lot of use. Stuff happens. The cheaper trucker you use, the more likely it's going to happen. And it happens friggin' often with these guys because they're just, they're running, man, some of the hoopties we see them come in, uh, like plywood bolted to the side of the trailer where they hit something and there was a hole in it and they, well, got to keep on trucking. Oh. Just friggin'. Oh, let's see. Uh, trucker damaged a car lied about what happened they said oh you know our truck broke down whatever we had a delay and they had the car repaired really badly at some like side of the road body shop on the way so instead of just delivering it and saying hey i'm sorry we damaged it file a claim well our insurance will pay out oh no they like took it to earl scheib and had a paint job done it hurts my soul. I'd rather just get the damaged car. Like, let me fix it. Right? <laughs> the right way. <laughs> right. Uh, taking a car that they were transporting to the strip club. I mean, haven't we all? <laughs> <laughs> uh, taking the cars on joy rides. That's 
honestly fairly co- common. Uh, trucker blew up a clutch loading the car, which, you know, when they're, this is when you want a guy with experience, right? Um, or gal, there's female truckers too. There's a lot of husband and wife truckers too, like team truckers. Those are the best because they usually bring their dogs too. That's a lot of fun. Get to pet their doggies when they're loading the cars. Anyway, um, yeah, so you, you have these sports cars or whatever. Half the time, these guys can't even drive stick. And they're trying to load them up these ramps, and they're just riding the snot out of the clutch. And I had uh, a Porsche dealer one time email me. I had bought a Ferrari 430 from them, and they said they were watching him, the trucker, load the Ferrari from their office and they could see smoke coming out of the clutch Ooh. they're like just so you know <laughs> oh man so i don't want to take us back too much but All how good. can you tell that a trucker has taken a car for a joyride like the strip club there might be some glitter in some places it doesn't belong <laughs> you know maybe some singles left over but like a joyride as long as they don't shred the tires or hit something you're not really going to know unless the mileage is way different i guess that's it okay. you note the mileage on the bill of lading and this is i, I mean that's a good question because in order to protect against this stuff we're jumping ahead now but this that's Ah. a very good question that's fine there's a thing called a bill of lading but a lot of truckers don't even fill those things out right they just like yep just sign here i don't note any damage anything you have to cover yourself right the trucker's entire job is to cover their butts so you need to take a picture of the mileage when it leaves make sure the person takes a picture of the mileage when it arrives Take a picture of all the damage, make sure you note it, and when the vehicle arrives, this is, man, one of the the biggest mistakes people make, is they get the car, they sign off on the bill of lading, and then they call me three days later and say, hey, there's a problem, there's this damage. I said, cool, did you mark it on the bill of lading? No, 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 the trucker pressured me not to. He's like, no, 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 that was there, or whatever, like... And these truckers, like a lot of them, man, they can, uh, they're pushy. So they don't want to be held responsible for anything. So if you try to call them out on something like, hey, you damaged it, they'll, you know, their jobs are on the line. Their insurance uh, policy might be on the line if they've had a bunch of claims. So they will pressure you not to put anything on that bill of lading. And so then three days later, you try to work something out. It's like, hey, man, the bill of lading, you signed off. You have no recourse. Like, if you think something's up when you take delivery of the car, you need to deal with it then, before you take possession of the car, before you sign off in the bill of lading. Because once you've signed off, that's it. It's your car. You have no recourse. So, good question, Ethan. No, Tyler. Ethan's over there. I'm the producer now, everybody. Right. <laughs> uh, and, yeah, cover your butt. Sign those bill of ladings. Take pictures. Take videos. Everything. Um, this happened. This one happened out back here. Transporter delivered a car to me. It was, like, 30 degrees out. And in order to get my car off, they had to pull this hot rod off. And it was... That was awkward phrasing. <laughs> um, <I> should, <laughs> it's like, uh, what's his name? <laughs> Bluth. Oh, yeah. Anyway, um, I should listen to things I say before before I complete the sentence. No, that's Tobias Funke. T- Funke, Funke, yes, thank you. Yeah. Yes. I just blew myself. <laughs> myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tobias, do you listen to anything you're saying? I'm sorry. That was, <laughs> this was not an attempt to be... Uh, uh, no double entendre meant there. It just came out awkwardly. Um, anyway, so they had this old hot rod, and it was 30 degrees out, and I could tell this thing was running just terribly. It was running on like six out of eight cylinders, misfiring like crazy, and they had not let it warmed up, not that it would make it any better. And then I hear just like, what, what, what? They're freaking ripping donuts, just bouncing the thing off the rev limiter on the ice in the back lot. And I like took a video in my rear view mirror. Cause I'm like, I didn't want to go video them. Like that's the other thing with truckers. Like a lot of them are mafia. And if you take a video and rat them out, you're a snitch. Like 
I've had yeah. truckers threaten me multiple times. Like it's pretty crazy. So somebody got a car that ran like crap that probably had very little life left on its engine and they probably blame the dealer that <laughs> sold it to them too. <laughs> what the heck, man? You sold me a garbage car. Nope. Trucker was friggin' ripping it. I can't believe they had the the chutzpah to do that in your like in a place of business yeah, that probably has security move. cameras Holy or like smokes. people there. That's nuts. Yep. Wow. Is that a regular yep. occurrence? You'd be amazed how often <laughs> shenanigans happen. Like not here like that. Right. That was that was the most bold move I've seen, but yeah. Um Let's see. Uh, we had a trucker jump start a BMW, which fried the gauge cluster. Oh. Um, I, I knew something was going to happen. Again, this was somebody booking their own shipping, and I had to show him like how to use the key. It is kind of the newer BMWs are kind of annoying because they have a push button start, but you have to put the key in the little slot first and push it in, and then hit start. And then hit stop to turn it off. And then to get the key out, you don't pull it. You push it and it like releases. Mm -hmm. So if you're not familiar with it, it's, I mean, let's be honest. It's just asinine, period. (laughs) But this trucker had no clue. And I'm like, he's going to leave the key in there and he's going to kill the battery. And sure enough, he admitted to the customer that he jump started the car. But we had to pay for the gauge cluster because everything's the dealer's fault. Uh, we're halfway down the crazy Whoops. story list, and it's time for a commercial. So, <laughs> with that, the Switchcast is brought to you by a Boxcast. Boxcast is a live streaming company based in Cleveland, Ohio, and they serve broadcasters and viewers around the world. Their founders launched Boxcast back in 2013 with one purpose: to make people a part of the experience. If you're looking to live stream your podcast, church service, car show, sporting event, wedding, or even your cannonball attempt, BoxCast is an easy and flexible live streaming platform for organizations. BoxCast is so easy that we're broadcasting this show with a phone. So head on over to switchcars.com forward slash BoxCast for your free trial. And with that, uh, Doug has taken leave to go... What uh, is BoxCast? Uh, uh, so you see the phone uh, that's sitting right in front of you? Yeah. That, that's pointed right at your, your face? Yeah. Uh, that, Why is that there? Uh, that is recording you live. Uh, we're streaming what? on. Yeah, so we're you're on YouTube and TikTok and what's Facebook. YouTube? Uh, it's a website where you upload videos and stream like we're doing right now, uh, so people can tune in and watch. So you're being watched by people on the internet right now. I don't know if I'm okay with that. Well, you're here, and we had you sign a release like months ago. I swear. I don't think I knew what that was. Ah, who did you, I mean, I need, you signed need to have my I need might not need to have I might need to have my old lady look at that one for me. But I mean we can we can make that happen. Uh but we've got you at least for another six months or at least until the season ends. So you oh, know phooey. we might need to look at next season. But hey, we'll we'll get you taken care of. Uh so for those of you that don't know, the Corvette Curmudgeon is here with us. Uh and we like to ask him a question every week. And this week, uh for you. The question actually came from a listener. Normally, it's me coming up with this stuff to talk to you about, but a listener of the podcast. You have people listening to this friggin' dumb show? Yeah, and listening to you so much and liking what they're hearing that they want to interact. Well, I know they want to <laughs> listen to me, but you well, they, young yahoos, I don't know what you got to say to anybody that's worth any value. We <laughs> usually have half an hour after the show that's purely people just asking questions. That's a Q&A with Doug. We go to like 9.30, 9.45 some nights. Just, Baffling. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> so uh, today, though, uh, AK, uh, previously, Ethan, I don't actually know where this question came from. Was it a stream? Do you, do you remember? This could have been a TikTok one, potentially. Okay, I'm not so sure, though. AK asked this question previously for you, the Corvette curmudgeon. Alaska? Mm-hmm. No, just AK. Yeah. Like, initials. The I'm entire imagine. state of Alaska. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so AK wants to know, is the 2011 Corvette ZR1 yeah. the best Corvette ever? Well, I, I mean, let's be honest. My Corvette is the best Corvette. <laughs> 1998 Carmine Red C5 convertible, six-speed manual, bone stock except for some chrome additions and extra Corvette logos and seat covers. But, uh, you know, well, I, the ZR1 is a pretty good car, I will admit. But it's, 
it's for friggin' rich people. I mean, came out, they were asking frickin' $50,000 over a sticker, and, you know, I got fixed income. I can't afford stuff like that. He's, all these rich people and these dealers friggin' marking them up and driving the price away from the, the real people, you know, that will just want to buy Corvettes and drive them. It's not, it's, it's not fair. I mean, you could probably get one now. What are we well, doing? I don't buy used Corvettes. I took oh. museum delivery of mine. I'm the only person to ever sit in the driver's seat. You don't even let your wife drive it? Heck no. No. She's wrecked three cars. Oh, hey, well. do you know why Helen Keller was a bad driver? <laughs> nope. Why is that? Nope. <laughs> what? You don't know? Uh, uh, please tell us. Because she like... was a woman. <laughs> there might have been some other things going on that would have been more important to her driving ability i think than her gender anyway um so you think that your c5 you guys Corvette, and your progressive ideas i don't know about you <laughs> so do you do you like that there's a hole in the hood of the zr1 that lets you see the top of the engine it's got like yeah it's pretty it? cool but you know then you can't see the chrome doodads that you put on the engine right i'd rather pop the engine so you you know i've got a mirror on the underside of my hood and so you can see the chrome pieces and you reflect everything hmm. so you know it's it's cool you can see the the top of the engine but i'd still want to pop the hood and put some some uh some chrome under there would you drive around with I've also seen... where would i put my stuffed tiger if i don't pop the hood <laughs> you can put it in the trunk i don't know you could sit in the passenger seat since your wife probably doesn't want to come with you what's that supposed to mean well you were a little cruel gotta be honest Anywho, um, well, very interesting. I think the ZR1 is a pretty cool car. I gotta gotta be honest. I think I might like it more than a C5. I'm done with you guys. <laughs> I'm out of here. I'll see you later. <laughs> Thank you very much to the Corvette curmudgeon. Uh, as always, brought to you unwittingly by the Corvette Buy Sell Trade Group on Facebook, your source for cranky boomers, overpriced Corvettes, and reinforced stereotypes. Welcome back, Doug. Yeah. Uh, speaking of... I gotta find my notes here. Speaking <laughs> of the uh, Corvette Buy Sell Trade Group, there was a uh, there was a really good one on there. Uh, somebody posted a wanted to buy for a 2008 or newer C6 Corvette in the Las Vegas area, and I'm pretty sure the Corvette curmudgeon responded because he said, "I got a 1977 Corvette for sale for 18k in Maryland." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, uh. what, what part of C6 Corvette in Las Vegas is a C3 in Maryland, but, you know. How do you, uh, Doug, how do you feel about the 2011 ZR1? Uh, I I think it might be one of the, the greatest Corvettes ever made, honestly. I'm looking at one as right now. As much as I am, like, I prefer naturally aspirated engines, I would take a supercharged engine any day over a turbocharged. So, I think it's good. I mean, the C6 Z06 was really, really close, but it had, you know, it was a little twitchy handling and needed better brakes. So a ZR1 with a ceramic Ferrari Enzo brakes and more power and more balanced handling. I, I mean, it's a great combination. And yeah, for the sweet. prices you can get them at now, I think it's one of the one of the modern bargains for a collector car that's good to drive. Did they make them in light carmine red, though? No, they made them in velocity tint coat, which is a deeper and richer burgundy. Okay. It's really pretty. Yeah. Um, there is, <clears throat> excuse me, an individual in the chat. He is, he or, or she, um, says, I feel personally attacked being, <clears throat> being a trucker. People make my profession look like crap. Other truckers or customers or whatever. I mean, there are good truckers out there. We're not saying that there aren't, but within the automotive space, it's kind of like 98% of them give the rest a bad name. And I'm using hyperbole here, but the, the ones that we're exposed to on a regular basis are the rule, not the exception. And the really good ones are the exception. So they are out there, and what we want to do is help people navigate to finding the good truckers. But these stories wouldn't exist if the industry wasn't full of them. I mean, if we just posted cars 
if we just posted loads on Central Dispatch, which for the rest of you, Central Dispatch is essentially a, a wholesale load board where dealers and brokers can post loads and truckers can accept them. If we did nothing but post cars on Central Dispatch and take the first person that called every time or any of the first 10, our life would be living hell. We would be having cars stolen. We would have our identities stolen. We would have cars being damaged, cars missing. Like, it would be, I mean, it's the Wild West. It, it's not an exaggeration. That's just how the industry is. Well, um, yeah, they just said, <clears throat> man, holy smokes, I apologize. <laughs> uh, to answer uh, the question that you said, is it is it the truckers or the customers, right? He said, it's the truckers. So, Right. No, and, and like, listen. I'm a used car dealer, right? <laughs> T- tell me I don't have an uphill battle trying to be right. somewhat good at my job and somewhat ethical. So I-, I feel you there. Like, good truckers are awesome. And we love the truckers that we have and the ones we have a relationship with. And we do everything we can to maintain that relationship. But, man, it's tough because um, there's just so many problems in the industry. Um, and and it's, it's an industry-wide issue. Um, so I, I feel you and I, I respect, uh, I respect you for being a good trucker. If you are, I don't, I don't know. Maybe you're just totally not self-aware and you aren't a good trucker, but I think you are, but you know, I just, I'm just messing. Um, all right, let's see. It's like every driver on the planet, right? 85% of drivers think that they're better than average. Yeah. That's a, <laughs> it's, mm. that's a self-awareness problem. Um, let's see. Okay. We left off with somebody jumpstarting a BMW frying the gauge cluster. Uh, somebody, a trucker jumpstarted a Ferrari recently that we shipped out causing electrical damage. Customer tried to blame us, of course. And that was a lot of fun. Um, and this happened, the other crazy thing too, right? Is that if we put something back on the trucker legitimately, or if we even suggest that maybe it wasn't that we misrep- misrepresented a car, that maybe something happened during transport because things can happen, people get all up in arms and just go, how dare you suggest that? You're just trying to absolve responsibility. It couldn't have been the trucker. You're saying a trucker caused this, that, or the other mechanical issue with the car. And I'm like, I'm not saying they did. I'm saying they could have. Like, we either have to assume that we did it or they did it. So there's like two possibilities and you're immediately saying it couldn't have been the trucker when we deal with truckers all the time and we know they're capable of all sorts of dumb stuff. So not saying used car dealers aren't either, but anyway, um, any number of times we've had truckers leave keys in the ignition during transport. Cause they're like, Oh, well that's just where I keep them. And modern cars, like, that doesn't work because that's activating computers. And so the battery's dead when you get there. And if it's in a Porsche, it's got an electronic trunk release. So you can't just jumpstart the car. You have to pull the fuse panel and jumpstart the circuit that pops the front trunk so that you can get to the battery. Which is great-ish when it's on the ground and you have a boost pack handy. It's another thing when it's on the top row of an enclosed carrier and you can barely open the driver's door enough to get in let alone like try to hook up this jumper pack which is right by the driver's door and you got to haul it up you know the ladder to the second floor of the transport truck and make this all work i mean it's just uh, little problems become really big problems when it is in a truck especially when it's a ferrari 599 and it's 20 degrees out that one was awesome. Yeah. Did you have to jump that or? Well, kind of. I mean, the problem with that was there was literally no option because the car was dead and I just had to take the risk that, you know, something bad might happen. But there's a nuance to that too because it depends how much voltage is already in the system. If there's like no voltage and you just shock it, then you can fry stuff. If there is some base voltage and you're not like shocking the system or, or, you know, turning stuff on that wasn't on before, then there's less risk there. So, but yeah, it was one of those where there really wasn't an option to not get the car out of the trailer. It was, you put a boost box on it or it's just, it's just there. You got to push. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, try getting a, a, a f- an F1 paddleship <laughs> transmission yeah. that's in gear and takes an electronic signal to the actuator to get out of gear without any voltage. I, yeah, we used a boost box. Uh, uh, stolen vehicles. Yep, truckers have stolen vehicles. That actually happens. We have customers all the time who ship us cars and they go, hey, I'm just going to sign off the title and put it on the in the glove box. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You're giving an unknown company a car and a signed title. Do you know how stupid that is? No. <laughs> please, for the love of God, no. And yeah. No, please, God, no. Uh, let's see. Truck caught fire with no insurance, burned a GT3 RS to the ground. We've seen falsified insurance documents to like show that they have proof of insurance, but it's not real. How do you ship a GT3 RS on an, with an uninsured carrier? Um, that is... Maybe the falsified insurance <laughs> oh, documents. Well, okay, that's true. Or they have $100,000 in cargo insurance. So a lot of these truckers just run way underinsured. They get the base amount of insurance possible. So we get calls all the time from these two and three car haulers, and they want to ship a multi hundred thousand dollar car. And I'm like, you only have two hundred fifty k in total cargo insurance. And they're like, oh yeah. And then they text me pictures of all the cars, the super expensive the cars they've shipped. And they're like, well, these you know we've never had a problem. I'm like, that's because you never had a problem. Insurance is for when you do have a problem, and when you wreck that Bentayga and 488 in your trailer with 250k in insurance, that's a problem. Yeah. So, I mean, the the underinsured thing is just that's literally every day. Um, and, and I've had guys too. Like one time, I took a gamble and we we're shipping like a 200k car with a two car carrier. So I was like, listen, I'm taking all of your insurance what is the other car you're going to take? And they're like, oh, yeah, it's it's Toyota Corolla. It's fine. And it's a total lie. They picked up another exotic car and were underinsured. But the problem is a lot of these companies are fly-by-night companies, and they've been around for a year and a half or two years or whatever. And if you have a problem, they won't file an insurance claim, or you might file a claim against them or whatever, and they'll just go bankrupt. They have no assets. If you look up the address of their company, it's in an apartment somewhere. And, you know, it's just, okay, cool. I'll I'll bankrupt this company. You have no recourse. Cancel my insurance. And I'm just going to start, you know, it's like, you know, AAA Transport 2 the next day. I'm going to shut down AAA Transport. And now I got AAA Transport 2. And that's the stuff they do. Um, oh, one of my favorite stories. This came to me secondhand. This did not happen to me, but it came from a reliable source. Uh, mafia guys showed up to transport a car and we're want to tread lightly here, but it is a known fact in the auto transport industry that most of them are Eastern European and it's very apparent by their accent when they call. Most of them have very, very limited English vocabulary. And again, I'm all for the melting pot of America. I love it when people come over here and are enterprising and add value to society. But when they're transporters who don't have insurance and can't do their job and won't be held accountable for it, and the only thing they know how to say is, hello, I am driver. (laughs) Like, it's just... uh, And a lot of them are connected to their respective, like, the Russian mob or whatever. Like, that's... That's just what it is. So one guy had a couple guys show up to transport a car and he figured out through whatever way, I don't know if they told him or he just knew that they were part of their whatever country's mafia. So he told them like, you guys got to go. You're not taking the car because their truck was just decrepit. And he's like, I'm not letting my car go with these people and this janky truck and they refused to leave they were like pushing him bullying him whatever but this was out in like west virginia 
And he basically pulled a gun out and he said, I'm going to fire two shots into the ground and everybody knows me. And within five minutes, you're going to have every friggin' sheriff in the county here. And there's going to be problems unless you guys leave right now and never contact me again. And they're like, okay, we're out. Wow. But it came to that. Um, I've never had that happen, but I've had, um, I've had truckers threaten customers, like I said before, when they wanted to mark stuff on the bill of lading. Um, I had, when I left, just as simple as when I left a company a negative review because they fried a clutch on a car and showed up late and threatened my customer and pushed them around, the only recourse I had was to leave them a negative review on Central Dispatch, right? And, and not pay them, obviously. Um, he called me and was threatening me and was like, well, you wouldn't like it. If you're, you know, what, what would you do? Would you be thinking of your family if, you know, you're running a business and somebody was trying to hurt your business? And I was like, what, what are you trying to say, sir? Exactly. Are you, are you threatening me? Cause this is, you know, this is a recorded phone call. It wasn't, but <laughs> you know, I'm like, if, if you want to th- make a threat, make a threat, don't make it veiled. Like, let's bring it on, make a real threat, and then we'll see what happens. But he was, like, trying to intimate that, like, bad things were going to happen to my family because I left him a negative review on Central Dispatch. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I heard of this one recently. Um, a trucking company came to get a car. The customer gave them a check when they picked the car up. Before they had delivered the car... They basically took the check, took the account and routing numbers on the check that they gave him to create counterfeit checks, write checks to a whole bunch of people, and drained his account. Oh, what? I'm telling you, this is there's a lot of mafia in the trucking industry. Um, trucker used a truck they were supposed to be transporting to haul their transport trailer when the truck broke down when their truck broke down (laughs) yeah just this week there is a post on a dealer group that a company called defiant haulers llc stole a brand new amg gtc and put 700 miles on it it was supposed to be delivered to florida but they found the car in los angeles and like i'm like wow this is a crazy story but the responses from these other dealers were flooding in because another guy's like, yeah, I had the same issue. A customer got a car with 500 more miles in damage and nobody will pay for it. Somebody else responded, my 2019 Huracan was stolen by the a different name company, but with the same address as Defiant Haulers, and we still haven't found it. Wow. Yeah. Now, I, I'm blaming the dealers a little bit for this because dealers are friggin' cheap and dealers are partly to blame for the fact that these companies still exist because dealers and brokers are bottom feeders. And so they'll just go with the cheapest guy and be like, oh, well, we haven't got burnt yet. We've shipped 200 cars and we haven't got burnt. Whereas every time I get burnt in the slightest bit, I'm like, okay, change policy, change policy. How do we make sure this never, ever happens again to the point where we mostly way overpay for shipping except when there's just like no other options. We are shipping a $15,000 car that is a piece of turd. Like, okay, fine, we'll, we'll try the guy on central dispatch. But, you know, it's just, it's just not worth the risk. So um, I'm getting behind. We do need to go to a commercial, and then we will get to some questions. And it looks like we are going to go to round two, part two of this uh, transport discussion, because we've laid out the horror stories, but uh, what do we actually do about it is the question. All right, SwitchCast is also brought to you by Celebrity Machines. Celebrity Machines offers more than 250 different screen-accurate license plates as they've appeared in movies and TV shows, like Back to the Future, Ghostbusters, The Fast and the Furious, Breaking Bad, and so many more. Celebrity Machines also makes our dealer insert plates, as well as our commemorative 2539 plates from the fastest cannonball run ever. Visit CelebrityMachines.com for more info and use promo code SWITCHCAST to save 25.39% at checkout. 
That's celebritymachines.com slash switchcast. Uh, we're going to go to the Scaminator. We haven't done this one in a little while, so I will explain the segment to you. Uh, the Scaminator is when Tyler will read off a for sale listing, and when I know that it's a scam, I will uh, hit the drum or yell scam or something like that. So it's it's a test of how well the Scaminator can sniff out scams. So take it away, Tyler. All right. This is listed in Ohio. Uh, drift goodies by Papitu Pappy. Uh, Ohio Drift Goodies is a Facebook group. Oh, yes. Well, I, there was not a comma there, and I added one. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Uh, this is for a 2013 Infinity G37 for five thousand dollars. Already. Uh, no title. <laughs> That's always sketchy. <laughs> Only cash. <laughs> DM if interested. Serious buyers only. Don't waste my time. <laughs> the the no title stuff just always wigs me out. Yeah. So I I find it funny they list it in Ohio Drift Goodies, especially given that it's like a uprated Altima, um, little bit bay, and it was missing the front and rear bumper. It had like black primer front and rear bumpers. So um, I feel like a no title uh, G thirty seven is in a drift group is I, I think the owner has a different, like he's thinking like street takeovers, not drifting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, um, so I looked this one up cause the guy actually listed the VIN, right? So th- anybody can tell that this is a scam. This is one of the easy ones. This is not hard. Um, the question is what's the scam, right? Uh, a lot of people said, Oh, it's a, it's a bank payoff scam. Like he's got a note for it and he's just not paying off the loan and he's trying to sell the car, which happens a lot. But that is not the case. I'm pretty sure that this one is actually stolen because I looked the VIN up. I don't know why he posted the VIN. I looked the VIN up, and it is currently registered, uh, or sorry, titled to a dealer in Westerville, Ohio, called HFK Motors, which I did try to call them to uh, do proper you know, journalism here, and it went to a, somebody's unnamed voicemail. But um, So it's titled to them. Clear title, no lien, although they could have a floor plan on it or something like that. But they they bought it like two years ago. So floor plan note would have expired and been up by then. So as far as I can tell, HFK Motors owns it outright. Uh, So my guess is that it was stolen from the dealership and a guy is trying to sell it. Why he's posting the VIN publicly, I don't know. Yeah, like if you're going to sell something without I a title, really don't know. Don't put the the VIN doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> like, so honestly, this one this one baffles me. If anyone has any more information, that would be cool cuz this one's a little bit of a mystery. It's obviously a scam, but what the scam is, we're not sure. Uh there's a good article this week from Road and Track. Well, good is to be debated here. Uh some of you may have seen it. Mark Spence posted it. Thanks for the tip, Spence. And the the title of the article was, The Miata is a better sports car than the S2000. Hmm. Now, both Tyler and I skimmed the article because my biggest question is, what Miata and what S2000? Because if you're saying a 2000s Miata is better than a 2000s S2000, that's a pretty bold claim. But Miata lovers love their Miatas. But no, it was talking about the ND2 Miata, at which point I immediately stopped reading because the ND2 Miata came out in 2019, whereas they haven't even made the S2000 since 2009, and it came out in 2000. So you're literally comparing a 20-year newer car and saying it's better. That isn't news, nor is that journalism. (laughs) The, The 22 Corvette is a hell of a lot better than the 2003 Ferrari Enzo. God, nobody like, cares. Like, that's, I feel like it's summed up pretty well in the because I, I when I was skimming through, I was like, okay, 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 I don't, I don't care about any because it, it's like, duh. Um, at the end, they say in the ND2, Mazda has unquestionably built a better two seat sports car than the S2000. Only took him nineteen years. So they like recognize in the article that it's kind of a bogus comparison. I mean, honestly, that's kind of knocking the Otis. That's like saying, oh, well, yeah. only took. It took two decades for us to finally catch up to Honda. <laughs> like, just, yeah. yeah, yeah. A, f- a friggin' Hyundai Elantra is better car than a 1978 Corvette, too, but nobody's writing articles about that. 
I just saw above. It says, in daily driving, the Miata feels better. And a few other things. But, like, of course it does. <laughs> Why? What? Yeah, it's got Apple CarPlay. Uh, this week, we also celebrated Independence Day by watching the government show off all of the expensive stuff they bought with our tax <laughs> money in order to keep us safe. Also, government officials God. rode by in really expensive cars throwing campaign promises out to little children. Candy that was likely purchased on the city's tab. <laughs> and then, to top it off, a Scottish drum and bagpipe band played Scotland Strong. <laughs> no joke. On Independence Day, we <laughs> yeah. all sit around oh. and listen to a Scottish nath- national anthem. Is that the national anthem? I don't know. But uh, What are you pointing at me for? I'm not from... I don't know. <laughs> I have no Scottish the irony, whatsoever. It, I'm just like, man... <laughs> Oh, parades have a whole different take when you're an adult and it's not just free candy. You're you don't like, like watching the guys in the kilts blowing their uh, bagpipes. and They could have played like America the Beautiful or something. That would have been cool. That yeah. would have been cool. Yeah. I enjoy seeing all the British cars that are in July 4th parades, <laughs> like your Jags <laughs> and stuff. With their, right. And I'm like, oh, there's some. I know, we're cool now. but There's a Bentley. That was the only one I saw. Yeah, one of the city just... council people rode in a Bentley. Were you um, in this parade? Yes, and this is why it's car related, okay, right? So right. the cool thing about the parade was I rode with Frank Comar of King's Automotive in his 1950 something Willie's Jeep. Shout out. Yeah. So that was fun. That's how I tied in politics with cars. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, parades have a whole different take. <laughs> As an adult, when you're like, wait a minute, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah. We gained independence from like excessive government oversight and ruling and we're celebrating them taking all our money to buy fancy things what uh odd odd okay back to um oh gosh we are just about out of time you know what we are just going to go to questions all right Uh, Thank you for sticking around. I'm sorry that we're like leaving you with a cliffhanger, but I did warn you there'd be a part one and a part two. So part two, we've told you the issues and the crazy stories with transporting cars. Part two, you got to listen next week and we'll tell you how to navigate those things. We have fun here. So uh, with that, let's go to the question of the week, which will lead us into your questions. Yes. And the question of the week is brought to you by Nuts for Sticks. Nuts for Sticks is a brand celebrating the manual transmission in all its forms. Forget flappy paddles, we like shifting ourselves. So check out our fun and funny stick-themed shirts at nutsforsticks.com and save 10% on your order using discount code SWITCHCAST. That is nutsforsticks.com and use code SWITCHCAST. Uh, So this week, the question of the week uh, comes from a user named 5Pops. Worse for buying cars? Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace? (laughs) Uh, Facebook Marketplace is the best for entertainment value, bar none. Uh, I mean, I remember seeing some ridiculous stuff on Craigslist back in the day, but Marketplace has really taken the cake with that. Uh, Craigslist seems mostly overrun with just like dealer listings and stuff. So um, there's not much on there, but I feel like the stuff that is on there is better value. Um, Both of them suck in terms of trying to search like anywhere outside your region and even with facebook it's like i feel like they're giving you an algorithm like you search for porsche and it'll give you different results day to day and i can never trust that i'm getting an actual you know true search versus craigslist i know like it's such old technology (laughs) like i know (laughs) whatever's there i'm being shown um, and Craigslist, you can sort of hack with like Auto Tempest, but it's not perfect. You still have to open a browser window for every single regional search. Um, but like, man, Facebook. So here's a good example from Marketplace. Uh, there was a 2001 Lamborghini Diablo 6.0 replica with a Wankel rotary engine. Oh, the Wankel or whatever. Yes. You say. <laughs> yeah. More like the Wanker <laughs> <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Lame Borghini. Not as good? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dead silence. <laughs> but, I, like, okay, Wanko Rotary and a Lamborghini. Can you imagine starting that thing up? Like, it would probably smoke more than a Chevy salesman in the 80s. 
and you Hell. disappoint <laughs> everyone that was expecting either a real V12 or a small block V8, the engine of yeah. choice for like Fiero kit car builders. Um, but the description got me. I, I mean, this is always the case with kit cars, right? Always. Over 100K spent to get it to this point. Needs interior, stronger door motors, parking brake, <laughs> and a few odds and ends. Just a few. Just a few. Uh, Just a few. How could you not get an entire interior <laughs> if you're spending a hundred grand so far? Where did it go? <laughs> Is it in like apex seals or where did like what's going Some on? Some things just get left on the table, man. <laughs> An interior happened to be one of them. If anyone, uh, I should take this back. There's ah uh, shoot. There's a a Countach replica. I can't remember the brand, but they make really really high end replicas. And there was one for sale recently for like a hundred k. And but if anyone can send me a listing of a kit car that doesn't need anything. I will send you a crap ton of switch car swag, a box full of it, because it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. I might even put some cash in there. It does. It doesn't <laughs> exist. Challenge for everybody. Doesn't exist. Anyway, ah, uh, so <laughs> what questions do we have? I've got uh, we've got a couple of good questions here from YouTube about some car transport stuff. Elon Musk is suspicious. Forty-three, longtime uh, watcher. I think he's oh. asked forty-three questions. <laughs> he might have every week. Sorry, he got suspicious. Love. It. He's got a couple, of, but we can at least ask you the first one here. Is there a good dollar per mile ratio to look for for enclosed transport? Uh, a dollar per mile plus or minus for long shipments. Uh, shorter hauls, it goes up. You know, and and then seasonally or. Like if you're shipping to North Carolina, you just pay the man whatever he wants. <laughs> um, thank you, Ethan. Bless you, Gesundheit. I apologize. Um, it threw me off. It's like a crying baby in, Dude, in church. So you know, sorry. Alistair I, can't yeah, handle it. I have the weirdest um, sneezes. Yeah, a dollar to to three dollars a mile. I mean, if I'm shipping a car to Pittsburgh, I'm paying at least two bucks a mile. Okay. Um, so the shorter the haul, the the more that price goes up. And then if you're looking at New York or Boston or anywhere with excessive traffic or tolls or inconvenience, they're just going to charge a, I don't want to go here, premium. Gotcha. So. The follow-up to that, which you might have answered a little bit, but I'm curious to see what your answer is directly. Uh, is it a must to only ship expensive vehicles with companies that have their own trucks? Or is it fine to use brokers in some cases? Oh, man. Yeah. No, never use brokers. We'll touch on that next week. <laughs> Stick around. Tune in next We're gonna week. We're going to get all into brokers. Yeah. You can't spell broker without broke. <laughs> Are there any more transportation-related questions? I, I want to yes. make sure we get to all of those. Uh, tic- TikTok has some solid questions, but none related to uh, we will transport. likely gotta... save those for tip talk. Yeah, we'll get to we those. Coming up against yes. we'll, we will get to those, but if you have transport questions, please go ahead. Yeah, Nick Kruger on YouTube uh, says, I've done the math a hundred times and I can't figure it out. After brokers and fleet owners and all that, I can't see how drivers can even cover their costs per mile, much, much less make money. Do you feel the same? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I've run the numbers on starting a transport company. I'm like, this is stupid. <laughs> um, yeah, the bottom feeders are really ruining it for everybody else. Um, I, I, I think Ed Bullion did a, a, a talk on this on VinWiki at one point to kind of explain the math behind it. And I think that they're like they're not showing their true costs. One, because they're not paying for insurance. They're not maintaining their equipment, and they're just like they're operating off of cash flow until something goes wrong, and then they bankrupt the company and start a new one. So, Nick, you're right. The math doesn't work because it doesn't work. It's, it's not true math. Sketchy. Uh, Jake D uh, says, I recently used U Ship to get my Cannonball car home to uh, Vermont after my run. It was about $2,000 for an open carrier. Are there better ways to go get in touch directly with a good transport company? Fantastic question. I feel like that's a next Ready week. Ready for the answer? <laughs> it's next week, isn't <laughs> next it? Next week. Absolutely. That is a really good question. There are better ways. It's very, very difficult. Uh, even on UShip, most of the people responding, you know, UShip exists as a marketplace to connect transporters and, and customers directly. 
But if you put in, I need to ship a car from here to there, I did a test and I like looked up the first 10 responses and they were all brokers. And not only that, your phone gets just blown up and your email nonstop because they're just like, can I ship this car? Can I ship this car? I mean, like you have to put them on mute. You have to block them because they call so often. So, yeah, you have to figure out how to delineate between the brokers and the actual shippers. But the problem is the shippers are never on there shopping for loads. They rely on the brokers. It's a messed up system. So they're... There is a workaround. It's not easy, but we certainly will cover that next week. And I think also the Frank C. you just asked in YouTube uh, what car shipping companies Doug would recommend. We'll probably also get into something <laughs> like that next week. Uh, if I don't know if you want to recommend it. Well, <laughs> that's a really tough question because it's like for what, for where, right? So every shipper that we use, except for the big guys, right? So you have like Horseless Carriage, Reliable, Intercity, JP Logistics, and another handful of the big name companies that just have massive fleets of trucks and go everywhere. We mostly rely on the secondary market, which is, you know, companies who have 10 or less trucks and they have specified routes. So I've built up a database and I go, okay, if this car is going to NorCal, I have two people I'm calling. If this car is going to Florida, I have six people I'm calling. If this car is going to Texas, I have three people I'm calling. Because I know that these are the guys that they do this route because they've figured out how to make that route profitable. They've built a network of dealers and consumers, and that's what works for them. So it's not as easy as just saying, hey, go call these people, right? The, the easy answer is just call one of the big companies because they'll get you in. You'll pay for it. They'll charge you a bunch of money, and you'll wait for whenever they have an opening. But it's safe. Like, your car will arrive. Um it's when people want to either not pay a giant premium or get something done quicker that you start getting into, okay, what other options do I have? And, and that's kind of what we're covering because the easy answer is just go pay whatever intercity or reliable wants and wait however long they want you to wait. Yeah, but I had not all of us have unlimited money or time. Ooh, whoops, Freudian slip. I had an intercity ship a car once, and I missed that the date. Not a what you bit. said. <laughs> <laughs> it is not. And that wasn't on purpose either. There was a fine experience. The car came here; it was great. But I missed the day that they were going to pick up the car by a little bit because there was some paperwork stuff with the seller, and I had to wait like another two or three weeks for them yep. to get another truck in the area. Yep. The car got here; it was exactly as expected. Like the paperwork, as they'd know to dance, like it was fantastic. But I paid for it, and I waited a long time. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and there's a saying. Uh, that I saw in a trucker's trailer one time, and he says, you know, you can have, you've got good, you've got fast, and you've got cheap. It's like, you can pick two of those. But honestly, in the trucking industry, really, you can pick one. You get good, it's not going to be fast or cheap. You get fast, I guess you could get fast and good, but it's going to be insanely expensive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a customer of mine one time paid reliable five thousand dollars i think maybe more i don't know what they charge yeah thousands and thousands of dollars to pick up a car on the east coast and ship it to him in california to make sure his was the only car on the trailer really? i think it was more than five i know it had to be because it cost more than that to go from east to west maybe it was 15 or 20 but wow yeah I do always Dedicated wonder how trailer. much they're pulling in because when we go to these shows like Amelia Island, there's always the parking lot that's filled with reliable trucks that are just parked there because <laughs> they're like the yep. event sponsor truck or whatever. And all yep. the show Concord cars are coming off. I'm like, they're raking in some dough. Speaking of Amelia, because there's auctions at Amelia, yeah. it's time for the appraiser. And I do we have one more commercial we need to get to, or do we get to all of them? We got to everybody. All right. So the appraiser is where Tyler and I see how bad we are <laughs> picking. <laughs> Uh, predicting prices. Uh, we each pick an auction for the other person and see where we can, uh, how close we can get to the hammer price. So last week I picked a 92 Porsche 964 Turbo for Tyler in his favorite color, sort of, of Amazon green. 71,000 miles, cashmere interior, good service history. He guessed it was going to sell for 165 grand and it went for how much? 210. Whoa. So. Honestly, I thought I might be a little low, but I just, you get up there and it's kind of weird. Like, where is it going to fall? It was a good sale number and it was a good premium for good presentation, a good seller, good color, like all, everything all worked together for a, for a high number. So, but the, 
this is a better trend because the other three you've missed high. <laughs> this one you missed low. I so. finally would have been made some money if it went for that and I was a dealer. Correct. And I had that kind of money to just dump on a car and bring a trailer. You know, lots of ifs, but I'm happy. Yeah. You're trending in the right direction. But you still missed by 21%. <laughs> I did details. Uh, so last week for you, I picked a 1999 Dodge Viper GTS ACR Hennessy Venom 650R, which is a massive mouthful. Uh, on the podcast, you had originally said 120. We talked a little bit later. Let you drop it down to 110. Still fine. I saw it's the fine. Picture. That it's, seat I was said I totally <laughs> torn up. So it's to, I, yes. it was reasonable. So 110 was the guess after seeing the driver's seat, and it sold for 78,500, yeah. which is a miss of uh, let's do 40 percent. Yeah. Which is that? That is a spicy number. We're finally getting into my territory, right? <laughs> I just need to keep picking like really. This is the first one I missed high stuff. on too. However, okay, there's a lesson <laughs> to be learned here for everybody listening. Our pod, this podcast is where we seek to educate, edify, and entertain you. Here's the uh, edification, right? <laughs> and this is not just me making excuses for missing. So after seeing the listing, because I didn't see the listing, Tyler just gave me the the relevant info. I immediately knew that I way overbid. Because in auctions, it is all about presentation. The photos were not good on this. The seats were ripped. They were cheap friggin' Recaros. Um, and, and it just it didn't look like the collector car I was imagining for an 11,000-mile Hennessy Venom. Uh, I think a different seller probably could have pulled 100 k with some recon, the correct seats, um, just making the car look like a real collector piece. Um, so... You know, presentation is key. It also ended on a Sunday, which I don't think is ideal um, for pulling big money. There's some exceptions, but I think that hurt it as well. Um, so that's one of those visual things. If I had seen it, I probably would have guessed significantly less when I just looked at the listing because you, you just get that feeling of a car and that listing didn't give it. Um, and if you Do you want some uh, bring a trailer confidence and sure <laughs> so the last comment on the listing says the gen 2 market is starting to settle auctions speak for themselves uh, so Which... <laughs> that is also complete crap right every the the friggin commenters on bring a trailer every auction high or low they they think they're experts because they comment after it ends and they're like, Oh, this says the market's crashing. Oh, the market's peaking. The market's doing this. And I'm like, one data point does not make a market. And if you can't look at the car itself and go, Hey, there's five reasons why that car sold low. Like it just shows your ignorance. And I, I see it all the time, all the time. Oh, the market's crashing. The market's doing this based on one data point. And it just, you know, it's, it's not the case. That's just such a ridiculous assumption. This isn't your car for this week, but I just saw on Bring a Trailer that they have a Ferrari F50 styled like kids coin op ride machine that ends in 17 and a half hours. <laughs> and it's currently I might three grand. That. <laughs> I think what? you do. It, it belongs somewhere in the Switch Car showroom. <laughs> That's on Bring a Trailer? Yeah. Oh. And it's yellow. With oh. yellow. Oh, it's pretty good. It's a Zamperla uh, Zap 50 children's ride. Isn't there a fake F50, like a Fiero kit car F50 on cars and bids also? <coughs> there was last week, I think. What did that go for? I do not We'll know. look that up later. Okay. All right. The It is time for the props and flops. This signals don't we the do, end of our... What's that? Don't we got to oh, do we our auctions for next week? Oh, we have to pick our cars for yeah. next week. This yes. Guy, Golly. Okay. Uh, you go first. <laughs> All right. So for you this week, uh, this is listed on... Uh, well, actually, I'll tell you that later. Uh, it is a 1996 Toyota Century hearse. Oh, is it one of the like crazy ornate yes. hearses? So those Whoa. who don't know, oh, uh, Toyota yes. Century is an extremely opulent and amazing luxury car that was only sold in Japan. The seats are cloth. It's got doily window covers and on the seat, like it, and it rides like I a cloud. I used one in my wedding. We yes. drove away from our wedding in one. It was for Japanese dignitaries. Exactly. Yes. So... They the made Rolls hearses Royce of Japan. The the hearses of this, if you can imagine the most ornate uh, Japanese style architecture with, and uh, art it's, with it's like, like dragons, a, it's like a and, Buddhist statue. Yeah, and it's gold. It's yes. like all gold. <laughs> I don't know if it's real gold, but it's colored all gold. It might be real gold. <laughs> oh man! I, so I see these <laughs> on 
like meme pages everywhere. I've never actually looked at what one sold for. <laughs> I have no idea. All right, how many miles? So it has uh, 33,000 miles. I did confirm that's miles this time. The last okay. time I gave you another <laughs> Arrest of the World car. Suck. <laughs> uh, it has a clean Virginia title. Uh, it is currently located in California. It is a black exterior with a gray interior. It's got the digital dash. Uh, there's no like and it, mods. 96 was a V8 because 97 was the first year of the V12, right? Correct. Okay. So four All liter right. V8 at 190 horsepower. And how does it look? Because like, the Viper looked like garbage, and that was the detail <laughs> you missed last week. I yeah, I what's did miss the, that. What's last the week? feels? What feels does it give you? Honestly, it gives me pretty solid feels. Presentation I score. We need to add that in. It's got really good presentation. It is a okay. dealer selling it. Thousand. Which which Japanese dealer? Is it Japanese uh, Imports or Duncan or? It's not either of those. Let me. Car crap. It is. Blah, 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 blah. Where is the? And what site is it on? Uh, Cars and bids. Cars and bids. Okay. It vans from Japan is the. So I think it's like maybe a. Um, they've listed some stuff on here, but they've. So regular centuries go for like eight to. 15 grand for a v8 which is tragic they are worth so much more than that um because they're way way better than any bentley or rolls royce and you know have zero maintenance costs um but a hearse man that is a wild guess um it looks like somebody made an el camino or a ute uh, out of a century, and then and just then put a Buddhist longed, temple, on, yeah, a Buddhist on temple on the back of it. It's amazing. <laughs> a Japanese El Camino with a Buddhist <laughs> temple. Uh, how do I possibly value that? Uh, oh, holy I, smokes! Good luck, man. <laughs> like this, and honestly, the photos are good. It seems to be in good shape. It's got I'm the seat doilies. Say 12, uh, 13, five. All right, thirteen five. Like there's novelty factor there. Nah, let's go fourteen. Why not? All right, fourteen. But it, I feel like the novelty factor is so over the top that you can't like it's totally unusable. You buy that to go to Radwood and nothing else. Oh, with that attitude, it might be totally useless. God, this is. I would daily this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Watch me go through a McDonald's drive through in this be, bad boy. You'd be dying to get into that. <laughs> sure. Uh, hey -oh. All right. What is, uh, what's my car for this week? Oh, my gosh. Yours is equally as terrible and awesome. <laughs> no. Yours is a 1968 Citroën <laughs> Oh, no. But it is not just Citron. the regular 2CV Ducheveau. It's a Forgonet. For Forgonet. What it, for for the listeners and viewers at home, and for me, please explain the what the heck that is. The Duchevel <laughs> or Truckette version, offered a versatile cargo area that proved useful for European tradesmen and delivery workers, and even as the basis for mobile homes. So it's like the the French Ford Transit van. Okay. Um, with this can't be worth that much. Paint on the side. It's like military gray, and it has like you know peach de le fruit on the side, or something like that. <laughs> All you people who said I couldn't pronounce God. Citroen. I think you just keep getting worse. <laughs> Citroen. It's Citroen. Oh, gosh. This cannot be worth very much. Okay, 68 Citroen 2CV. It's in Montreal, Quebec. Uh, 48,000 kilometers. It's for sale by a dealer. It's on P-Car Market. And the presentation score is it's like a, it's like a nine. And it's there's a bunch of Citroens <laughs> in the background. Uh, so they probably know what they're doing. Uh, so this is in Canada. Yes. So you'd have to import it to the U.S. if yes. you are in the land. So of you have two and a half freedom. percent duty on top of it. It yeah. does come with like a, a few scale models of different liveried ones and like ambulances and stuff like that. So you could like start your own little enthusiast display. For are these rare? Car. Can I ask that? Is I've never seen one before in my life, so I think so. Is this northern Canada or like Saskatchewan? Montreal, or Quebec. Or, okay. Sorry, Montreal, Quebec. <laughs> Before any more of that happens, uh, I'm going to... I have no idea. I'm just going to say 10 grand. Maybe. All right. So the, they're both kind of hearse type things. So the okay. question is, does the French bread van go for more than the Japanese 
El Camino Buddhist temple. I feel like if the douche goes for more, I'm going to quit. <laughs> like, this, there's no way. <laughs> That's very true. Something is wrong. This is the litmus test of the automotive yeah, car this... market. So I'm going to say 10 grand. All right. I said 14 on the on the the Buddhist temple. Okay. <laughs> Buddhist Buddhist death temple. Um, Don't forget about the fire up there. See, fire? See how you know Canada? There's a f- there's a fire up there. Oh, there it's isn't in these think, photos. Think about how, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, well it's, never mind. It you know, be it's okay. Forget it then. <laughs> yeah. All right. So with that, it's time for the props and flops. Uh, <laughs> both <laughs> two giant flops leading into the props and flops. How the heck All did you guys right. pick two? Switch cars is the <laughs> enthusiast. I think we're trying to like screw each other yeah, now. Clearly. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> this for me now. The goal here. Doug does this for a living. I have bought like three cars in my life. So uh, I'm just Toyota a Century. Gosh. Like I'm just being cruel pick. at this point. Like yeah. the weirdest but the coolest stuff because I want to talk about cool cars on here. So and that's, a Toyota that's my goal. Century. Did you Buddhist see? Temple. I'm going to have to no, show you a picture. I, I, I my, saw it. Yeah. Switch Cars is the enthusiast dealership where we buy, sell, consign, service, and store only cars that we like ourselves. Check out our hand-picked inventory at SwitchCars.com. Our pick of the week from Switch Cars Inventory is... It is an FD Mazda RX-7, which is... uh, For the non-nerds, that's a 1993-ish... Uh, yeah, ish the the roundy bubbly one. They're gorgeous cars. Unfortunately, this one doesn't have the pop ups anymore. Which you know, it's got the frog lights. Yeah, whatever you want to. Uh, so I, I did uh, important details. I took a photo of your little key tag you got on it. So it's a 93. Uh, it's red, uh, which is a yep. you know, fine color. VIN is 1765, and it says it's one of one on here, which is kind of cool. Like a Corvette. I I don't know. It says one of one. Is well, this, like that's the keys. That's how many keys there are. Uh, are you serious? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's what we put on the key tag. There's like two keys or three keys. I, <clears throat> We're just. It gonna comes with one key. Go one over that. that. It comes you know, with one nice. key. The key is really rare. It's also um, a slick top, non sunroof car, and yeah, it's cloth interior. How many miles on? It's low miles, right? Uh, did you have that? You didn't have that on the. Key no, thing, I don't. No, nope. I have no idea. Sorry, it's one of one. <laughs> it's one. Of, it doesn't <laughs> matter. It's That's rare. a new arrival. We don't have all the details, but it is a very, very nice example. Uh, looks to be pretty stock as well. So if you're in the market for a, a collectible FD RX7, hit us up. Our flop of the week. No, this has to be the prop of the week. No, it's it's the. I, I made it the flop. I don't know how I did that. Anyway, I think it's a prop. Charges pending against a man who drove his Corvette on the Chicago NASCAR course. For those of you don't, that Whoa. don't know, uh, NASCAR Xfinity Series set up a road course in downtown Chicago. And, uh, yes, it's a, it's a new thing they're doing. And, um, yeah, they temporarily suspended shooting crimes so that uh, people could race around the city. And, uh, hey, man, look at the stats. Um, so yeah, some dude drove this like red and yellow flame wrapped C8 Corvette. He drove through a barrier and did some laps on the course before he was apprehended. Uh, they have charged him with negligent driving, lack of a valid registration and operating an uninsured motor vehicle, which I don't know how you have a C8 that doesn't have insurance. That's crazy. That sounds like it might be worth it to drive on a street course honestly yeah for sure the flop of the week might have been this like windshield banner this dude has or just maybe the route it says never run out of bad on top of the windshield what <laughs> what never run out of bad yeah i thought it said never run out of gas but that's even better oh maybe that is it's really tough to see never run out of it's bad. never run out of something no there's no way it's ugh. Oh, i hope it's bad oh he ran out of bad then when the cops <laughs> got him Anyway, so I, the question is, was this worth it, right? So he got charged with negligent driving, which is a new one. I looked up the Michigan code, and it is, quote, a person who operates a vehicle upon a highway or a frozen public lake, stream, or pond, very specific, or other place open to the general public, including an area designated for the parking of vehicles in a careless or negligent manner, likely to endanger any person or property, but without wantonness or recklessness, is responsible for a civil infraction. Did you also look up the law for Illinois? Gosh darn it, this was in Illinois. (laughs) He's like, all right, happened in Chicago. All right, what's Michigan Michigan. doing? (laughs) 
all that work. Chicago, Michigan. <laughs> or I don't know, nothing. Chicago, Detroit, whatever. And yeah, they, not hey, really that close. At least the guy didn't wreck it. Speaking of Detroit races, they, the guy, the pace car driver wrecked a Corvette leading the, the Indy race up there. Oh, a couple wasn't of years that, ago. Yeah. So was... I'm impressed that this guy actually made it around the track and didn't wreck it. So, but uh, anyway, so if it's the same in Illinois, it doesn't seem like a giant charge. Probably worth it. Maybe a couple thousand bucks in lawyer and court fees, and you know, probably couldn't have paid that money to the get internet. there. Yeah. Right. Couldn't have paid the money to get there anyway. Right. Uh, speaking of breaking the internet, our prop of the week is we have a new Instagram follower. This isn't really news. Um, uh, we're, we're a little more popular than, than the celebrate one, Here we go. but it is because their handle is Nissan cross cab. <laughs> oh, what <laughs> they are trying to do for Nissan cross cabs. What Ed Bullion has done for manual mercy Lagos <laughs> from their page quote, taking Nissan Murano cross cabriolets <laughs> from cult car to collector car. <laughs> yeah. Ethan, get in at the ground floor, Ethan, man. You've got, uh, Ethan, you've got to buy one it's before they go through the roof. This is true. Do they have any photos of like the I mint didn't ones? Even that pun. <laughs> Only going up in value. Oh, hey oh. <laughs> Only going up in value. Yeah, and they're, they're not, not going, going down, down just like the top. Yeah, hey oh, it's always hey broken. <laughs> you got to get like the one of the mint or the blue. Like oh, this one is a mint sharp. green one. Those oh, ones is are yeah. Sharp. The ones I always see around here are black. There's one nah. in particular I see. It doesn't do much no, for this me. This is man. a mint green one, and yeah. it resides. Uh, what's in this, the interior like, big storage facility? I don't remember. In uh, with a bunch of collector cars, like they're they're really wow. They they're serious cross about cab. it. I've oh, never seen smokes. anybody driving a cross cab with a frown. This, this is good. <laughs> this is good. Yeah. How do you drive a car with a frown? I usually Got like it. use a steering wheel <laughs> and an engine. <laughs> hey <-o. laughs> We need to get Ethan's A O on like a soundboard. <laughs> every, so when he's like, hey -o. Oh, so my goodness. Joke. All right. We are over time. Yeah. Please join us next week where we wrap up the transport discussion and come back to more questions. For those of you watching live, thank you for sticking around. And we will go right into the bonus round of Tip Talk where we'll have a live Q&A session with you. Rapid fire. Um, and uh, yeah. So thank you to Ethan and Tyler for uh, keeping me uh, above board here somewhat. Thank you to our sponsors, Boxcast, Nuts for Sticks, Switch Cars, Celebrity Machines, and Parallel Printworks and Steve. Stephen Holm Woodworking. Our mu bumper music is provided by Emily and Ivory. You can stream their full album on Spotify or SoundCloud. Ah, uh, yes, you can actually see them live at Collision Bend Brewery in Cleveland on Friday night around 7 p.m. This episode will be available next Monday in audio format wherever you listen to podcasts. So if you're listening on audio format, too late, you missed our concert. Thank you for listening, <laughs> and we'll see you next Wednesday at 8 p.m. as we look forward to edifying, educating, and entertaining you on the drive of your life. Cue applause track. All right. We do have a tipper here. All in, right. Uh, in TikTok. Tip talk, starting um, out strong. We are. We we did wait for after the show to get to this because it, it didn't have anything to do with transport. But it's from uh, Mr. Nobody, who is a TikTok regular. Sweet. They They want to know. We can we can assume he by the Mr. Uh, have you seen the 23 Cadillac Escalades having massive water leak issues and GM isn't doing anything? Are you uh, aware of this? I'm not aware of that. Does it surprise you to hear this? It does. I've heard of Tesla having massive issues. <laughs> uh, the Cybertruck having massive water leak issues. I've heard of Jeeps having a lot of recalls. Um... Yeah, that does surprise me because Chevrolet is one, two, three, four, five on the JD Power 2023 U.S. initial quality study. Wow. Uh, yeah, GMC is sixth. Cadillac is eighth. So they are all at the top. Um, I've always liked Escalades. I, this certainly surprises me. Yeah, massive, massive water leak issues. Ma like massive water leaks or lots of issues? See, I don't know if the issues are big or if there's a lot of small issues, but what is true, what we do know, is that GM is apparently not doing anything about it. That so. also surprises me. Yeah. Not that I'm like a huge GM fanboy, but Ford is really good at like not doing things about <laughs> bad engines. <laughs> and... I don't know. It's 
I mean, I know every manufacturer tries to push stuff off. Porsche's done it. BMW's done it. Ford's done it. They've all done it. They've made massive engineering mistakes and then just said, yeah, too bad, so sad. But uh, I'm sure they will eventually. Every manufacturer comes along, whether it's because of pressure from a class action lawsuit or just the general market or whatever. Um, just because they're not doing anything about it now doesn't mean they won't. Right. Um, they may be coming up with a solution. They may be waiting right. until they get hit with a lawsuit, something like that. Um, you know, I don't know the internals of how all that stuff works, but like our Mercedes has, you know, the W212 Mercedes has uh, subframe rusting issues, right? So it's like almost 10 years old now, more than 10 for some of them. And Mercedes just announced that they'll be covering them under warranty, like within the last three months after hmm. people have been dealing with this issue for half a decade. So I'm sure they will. It's just a matter of time. They got to come up with a fix and, you know, he also says that you should check out the Chevy SS for sale on Facebook Marketplace for seventy grand, thirty seven thousand miles on an automatic. So what are your thoughts on does that sound all pretty standard That's insane. to you? Or is that yeah, right. That's a my Corvette is best Corvette <laughs> sedan scenario. That's ridiculous. Seventy Unless it's uh, one of the like Z06 clones, because in Australia, so the Chevy SS is a Holden something or other. Yeah. And in Australia, they made a Z06 version with the LS7 engine and the giant brakes and different suspension. And somebody made a clone of one of those a while ago in California because you cannot import them. Um, Holden so, Commodore. Thank you, thank Hot you. Rod. Yes. Um, I was going to guess that, but I would rather be ignorant than wrong <laughs> you would have looked so cool if you did though no it, it whatever i look so <laughs> cool anyway um i don't need to try hard uh no if it's like a z06 clone then then that's that's cool but right other than that that's a yeah that's a, my wife wants me to sell this listing um let's let's do one more quick tiktok one then we'll hop back over to youtube okay um this was uh, the first question. Actually, I, I want I want to get to I want to get to this guy because he's he's asked this uh, a, a few weeks in a row and it's just never quite fit in. Unexpected Santa, what is your favorite road to? Yeah, right. Let that <laughs> oh, let that's that sink his in. Username. Yeah, I thought that was like the the framework of a question. Like right. The, the, yeah. So unexpected Santa. Santa. Like somebody's going to give you yeah. a gift. Right. What do you take? I was not ready for that. Okay. <laughs> Irrelevant to the question. There's giving. just unexpected Santa. Unexpected Santa. Yes. From from the user. So what is he Santa. like come down your chimney on August 7th or? <laughs> yeah. Surprise. <laughs> it's like that line from uh, what was that? Is that Die Hard? John McClane? Where he says. Uh, oh, yeah. Surprise. Surprise, Mr. Mother. Falcon. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the TV edit. Oh, is it really? Yeah, it's great. They have, like sideburns and a goatee <laughs> yeah. instead of a full beard. <laughs> Wearing tie dye. Yep, pretty much. All right. Unexpected Santa. Favorite road to drive in Maine. He he's asked this a, a, a number of times, so uh, think about this one. Whichever one has been paved recently. <laughs> <laughs> Them frosties are real <laughs> sons of guns up there. Uh. <laughs> uh That's a hard question to answer because every road is good, but every road is bad at the same time because there's hills and corners everywhere. There's no straight roads, but there's so many frost thieves that the roads always suck. So it's really hard to take a performance car up there and be like, yeah, I'm going to find these great back roads and it's going to be awesome. It's more like, let's see how to protect my splitter and my oil pan. <laughs> Um, and then you just randomly come upon a dirt road and it's like, wait a minute, I thought this was a main highway. <laughs> um, yeah. So for that, I, I, I don't have any like super favorite roads. I'd be open to suggestions for the next time I go up there. Um, but you know, I kind of play tourists like route one going down East is pretty good. And just like taking everything from route one down to the peninsulas and you know for up there it's more about the scenery than the the actual joy of driving the roads because hmm. uh yeah you can't drive anything at a spirited rate up there do you guys remember how allergic i got when we went up to rhode island oh my yeah goodness, i thought you were gonna yes. die that was you're like the state oh. puff marshmallow man yeah dude man, yeah i blew up i inflated <laughs> to twice my size i think anyway 
What, what, what's a, what a good that? trip that was. Uh, I got it. Vampire Bear 13 uh, said that there was a century hearse at Duncan Imports. I've been hard re- researching over here. Uh, there is one, but it's in Duncan's collection. One isn't for sale, and I cannot find another listing. So I truly have no idea what that hearse is going to go for, Doug. <laughs> like, you search Toyota Century hearse, and the cars and bids listing is the first thing that comes up. So uh, we might... Uh, it'll be interesting. Yeah, I I don't even know where to guess at. Because it's like either there's a huge premium for the novelty of it, or there's a huge detraction because the novelty is, is just too much. Like, I, I, I don't think I could drive that around. I it's, you're as much as I want to meme and say that like I would daily it. It's a an experience car you take to show so people can oogle and ogle right. it. Like, or just to confuse people driving down the road, which is honestly more fun. Yeah, but like that would get more attention than my orange Lamborghini. Like it for would just sure, be weird. So. Uh, do you have a question here from Dank Daddy? Uh, what's it like to be an exotic used car salesman? <laughs> Did you like the username well, or the I'm, question more? Uh, I, <laughs> Dang, yeah. daddy. I, I wouldn't say I'm very exotic. I mean, I get a little bit of a tan in the summer, but... What time is it? You know, we... <laughs> I don't wear fur or anything like that. I'm from Maine, not the Caribbean. Yeah, great question, <laughs> Tyler. I got, I got nothing from it. <laughs> Does he want a real answer to that? I think he does. I don't. I mean, with a username like Dank Daddy, I don't know. But <laughs> you make it sound so great, used car salesman. Uh, <laughs> Such a glamorous job title. <laughs> glamorous. <laughs> Did but also exotic. call yourself that earlier tonight. So yeah, but never exotic. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's it's cool, but it's not as glamorous as it seems, right? Like work is work. Uh, the, the clientele is arguably more difficult. They're better once you develop a relationship with them because they can be more loyal and, you know, good good clients of the upper echelon are really good clients because they understand how business works. Um, and they reward, you know, people who give them a good service. Um, but it can be really, really difficult because people also just are really demanding. I mean, I don't think that changes from cheap cars to expensive cars. It's just when you get into expensive cars, people have like they become entitled to having their demands met because they have money to get it. And, you know, so so you become a servant. Sometimes you have to be very, very humble (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and like take a back seat and be like, I'm not a business owner. I'm here at your service, sir. You know, whatever you want. So um, that can be defeating sometimes with being like talked down to and stuff like that. Um, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's just business. It's, it's a widget. You're, you're selling something, you're buying something for less and selling it for more. You're trying to add value to the product. Um, you know, business is business at the end of the day. It's, it's kind of all the same. So I think it's pretty easy for folks to see. And even for us, when we get to come into, you know, your shop and see all the glorious cars that you've got in inventory, uh, one of one FDRX seven and all that stuff. And we, we don't think about how it gets here and how it leaves. You know, we just see all the cool stuff that's here and it's like, oh, you can drive whatever you want. But there's so much more that goes into yeah. all of it that I've learned coming, you know, getting to know you over the past few years that it's not all it's cracked up to be. I spent just about the entire day in my office. And I drove the shop wagon home because I didn't have time to find something and pull it out and put a dealer tag on it. And I was like, well, then it has to get washed or whatever. Like, it was just like, okay, the shop wagon's outside and I need to get home because I'm hungry. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's still a job at at some point. So, um, yeah. We can uh, take it back to TikTok here with Snoopy Almanza, who asked a question, a few questions last week. Uh, I need help with this question and need opinions. Peanut Gallery, your opinions are welcome here. Apparently, looking to get I'm into not good enough. <laughs> looking, he did say opinions with an S. Looking to get into I can give you multiple. <laughs> looking to get into <laughs> hatchbacks. Open the door. Been debating. <laughs> Holy smokes! Why did I give him more alcohol? <laughs> yeah, like, right. Been debating getting either a Focus RS or Volkswagen GTI. It has to be a four-door. Tyler, speak to this. And technically, a hatchback is a five-door. <laughs> Can't help himself. So does you it have get to a be... Mazda RX-8. That's a four-door. 
<laughs> Does it have to be a hatchback? Well, Is that he one said of the requirements? They, they specify that they want to get into hatchbacks. So I would assume that he's oh. looking for a hatchback, sure. I feel like I think I've driven a Focus RS once. It wasn't very fast. That car is probably more fun than a GTI, but you're going to look like a child. <laughs> um, <laughs> the GTI, on the other you hand, sound like a child. <laughs> you'll, <laughs> yeah. rapsh, rapsh. You're, you'll have the biggest smile on your face the entire time, but like it's hard to be an adult in one of those. <laughs> the GTI is almost too adult. It's very like reliable and yeah. safe. Wait, did you just call Volkswagen reliable? For the most part, GTI, modern GTIs are, aren't they? Reliable enough. It's a Volkswagen. You'll get a check engine light eventually. We all do. <laughs> Sometimes many. And rust. Uh, <laughs> well, that. Um, so I feel like if you're really <laughs> about fun, the, foc- the ride in the RS is also pretty rough at times. So um, it's golf not R. fast. It's rough, but it's fun. Yeah, you're going to have more fun, okay. I think, it in is the Focus fast. RS. Golf R. Golf yeah, R. That would I'd be my answer. Golf Probably. R. The only downside of the Golf R besides being a Volkswagen, is the all-wheel drive system is very front bias. So if you're trying to be like Drift Pro, like that's not it. But it's a very, very fun car. Hmm. Also a Toyota Matrix. That's a great choice. What? You got some laughs If back you there. don't want payments, <laughs> man, buy a $10,000 Toyota Matrix. It's a four-door hatchback. If you get the, the <laughs> XR or whatever, you get the Celica GTS leather steering wheel. It's a three-spoke steering wheel. You feel like you're driving a real sports car. Even if you don't look like it from the outside, it's got a ton of cargo space. It's cheap. It will never break. And it actually like rotates really well. Like you trail brake that thing in, you can get it sliding around a corner. The e brake works great. I drove one of those for like a year and a half with a dented door and a busted mirror and was not ashamed of it. I had a lot of fun. We I was actually going to say you. Pr- oh, sorry. No, I was just going to say we actually have a question about a Celica, but I don't. I don't want to change if you're going to. No, it, I think the other option is to do if you don't already have a daily because a lot of people when they're looking at like something like a golf, they're like, I need one car that does it all. And mm-hmm. you obviously have to sacrifice a lot when that happens. If you can f- fit two cars somewhere, you can get some reliable daily and then get them maybe a used hatchback that is be interesting or, you know, or a whatever. sports car or a sports car. Well, yeah. they really want to get into hatchbacks. though. They, or, they we'll get a hatchback for practicality. You get a Matrix, you save money, and then you have enough money to buy a Miata or an S2000, but probably a Miata because it's better according to Road and Track. Yeah, as long as it's 20 years. As long as it's a 2019, yeah. Right. Uh, Speaking of Volkswagen reliability, uh, Toyota John says, my 2016 Passat is super reliable, only have to do an oil change every 100 miles. (laughs) 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 We love self-deprecation. We love it. Oh, uh, self awareness um, is great too. Yeah, that's good. Oh, that's really man. good. Um, we're we're getting kind of late here. Maybe we'll maybe one we'll more, do one, one more, more question from TikTok because we ran over on the the regular show. Yeah. Um. Well. Okay. Here here's a pre question because this will determine <laughs> what question I ask. <laughs> Only every one hundred miles. That's great. It sounds like a bargain. That's so yeah, and half the price. how many Only lights are on your dash? Yeah, this would be. These are good questions. That's that's the unexpected Santa, right? You got a Christmas tree on your dash. You must own a Volkswagen. Uh, however, on the other hand, we have Ethan Haynes, who is saying, I've tracked the piss out of my 2020 GTI, and it's been fantastic. 60,000 miles, one issue. So there well, you go. Well, yeah, if you exactly. like understeer, one you'll issue, be you only have 60,000 miles Holds on up. it. <laughs> Try 100K. Yeah. Just wait. Um, I had a Touareg that was issue free until sixty thousand miles, and then I sold it to the next guy. Do you know what the Fireball Run is? Fireball. Sorry, right. I just think of Dwight Schrute. Yeah, <laughs> in the office. No, I don't know. Okay, what the fireball well then we're just going to get rid of that question. I, I assume it's a poser cannonball where you stay in hotels. It is. It is whatever it is. It is now defunct. Because the question was, what are your thoughts on the now defunct Fireball Run? That's a good question for next week. Yeah, we'll I'll look at you like yeah. shots of Fireball at every. Stop. <laughs> there we go. Oh, that yeah. would be why it's defunct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, but we'll. 
Yeah, let's do uh, Pro Charged F one fifty. He was he was here last week as well. Thoughts on the first generation nineteen seventies Toyota Celica? Hmm. I've never owned one, so my thoughts may be irrelevant. <laughs> I mean, that was when Toyota was building really, really, really cheap cars to to gain entry into the market. But it's still kind of cool. I mean, it's not much to it. They're so cool looking, I think. I love them. They're real-wheel drive, too, aren't they? The early ones? I think so. Yeah. I mean, that's when that's when economy cars were like almost sports cars. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on Celica GT4S over the Supra? No. It's <laughs> a very shameful no. It's not shameful. It's just it. It's still a Celica. It looks like a Celica. It may be super cool and rare. And what's the other one that Toyota? Is it the Supra? It has presence. Is it the GR eighty six? Is the other one one that uh, Toyota does right? Yeah. Do you? I mean, that what what generation Supra is? I I guess that's fair. I I I hear Supra and I immediately think of like nineteen ninety five Supra twin right as wing. Most people probably Supra that exists in my world. What so. what generation Celica GT4S do you typically think of? Isn't there only one? I like the mid nineties? Tyler? I thought there was only one. Well then there yeah. you go. Mid nineties. We can just do mid nineties to mid. I mean here. that's why I was thinking like that generation super versus that generation Celica GT four. But one thing we know, the Miata is better than them all. All right, guys. <laughs> per road and track, what, yes. According to road and track. <laughs> What stereotype are we enabling this week? <laughs> uh, well, this with that, I thank have. you all very much for joining us on the live bonus round of Tip Talk. We will see you next week, and we'll talk more about transporting. <laughs>